From celebrity life to everyday life to politics, there seems to be a lack of decency in America, leaving many of us feeling hopeless about the possibility of change. Cultural anthropologist Grant McCracken says there's a solution to all of this, a return to honor. His book is called The New Honor Code, a simple plan for raising our standards and restoring our good names. He joins us live. Thanks for being with us, good Grant. Morning. Hey, Robin. Hey, Larry. Nice to be here. So when you think of honor, this is you're just not talking about morality. There's something more to it. Right. I'm talking about people holding themselves account to a higher standard, demanding it of other people, demanding it of themselves. You know, I, I wrote this book because, like every American, I looked around me and saw evidence that we'd kind of broken the moral compass. and. You know, you look at people like Jeffrey Epstein and Larry Nassar, and you just think, wow, uh, you know, we're, we're in trouble. So uh, honor used to rule uh, uh, Western morality for a long time, and anybody who's been watching Bridgerton has kind of got a glimpse of what it's like to live in an, in an honor society. So I wanted to adapt that idea, see if there was some charge left in that, in, in that powder. I wonder if that's true or if we really just know about the horrible things more because of our information technology. I mean, JFK was running around with women and nobody really talked about it. So is, is it really, are we really in that much of a down slope or do we just know about it more? I think, I think we are on a down slope and I think one of the ways you can tell is when you look at, uh, as, I, as I did for the book, the cases in which people behaved badly. I look at the Harvard soccer team and that's a case in which uh, the soccer team behaved very badly indeed and in fact nobody on this august campus uh, held them to account. Um, and that suggested that somehow bad behavior, you know, a generation ago, uh, the, the president and the dean would have gone into orbit, um, and the reaction this time around was much more subdued. So I think we have evidence that, in fact, we protest bad behavior. More to the point, I think people think that some people, especially some celebrities, act as if they're entitled to, to behave badly, that that's one of the good things about being a celebrity, you can kind of do what you want. So, uh, yeah, I think I think it may be worse than it used to be. But some people might say, you know, we have this cancel culture going on that people are always being held accountable, even for the most, you know, some very justifiably, but some maybe it's some minor thing they did ten years ago and they're and it's over with. Where does that fit in the honor spectrum? Sure, that's a great question, um, Robin. I think there is a kind of hypervigilism uh, uh, going on here, where people are looking for any simple, uh, single, simple departure from the new, uh, the new orthodoxy. That's not what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about departures from morality, um, and and that's when people do things that really violate. Um, the expectations we can have of them when when we understand the role they have been assigned as a as a teacher or a parent or as a spouse there are certain rules in place and I think we can we can find those out and dust them off and reassert them as ways in which we can reasonably expect people to behave yeah well the concept of, of honor seems simple but but as you sort of alluded to I, I think it's a skill I mean I don't think people are walking around thinking they, they suck. <laughs> I mean, everybody thinks they're great. So how does one figure out uh, what they're doing wrong and how to improve themselves? Yeah, I think it's a question of looking for clarity and consistency and, and a kind of courage, right, where people say to themselves, okay, you know what you can use, you know if for lack of any other rule you can use the 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 golden rule and say how would others have me behave but setting that aside we just need to say okay what what does a father do in these situations or what does a husband do in these situations and that's been so blurred that it seems to me we we have a hard time uh, we're no longer ruled by morality in the way we used to, but it, it's not a very compl complicated business of, of reasserting that and, and returning ourselves to a certain clarity. So does that just fall on parents going forward and our generation is kind of, you know. Yeah. <laughs> we, we're, we're Let's too, give up on this one and look, at, look we'll forward. We'll start with the next one. <laughs> Well, that, that is one of the interesting things. You know, in the last couple of weeks, we've been looking at uh, various political forces insisting on controlling how people speech, uh, speak and the platforms in which they're allowed to speak. And the specter of a kind of control from on high, from the government, is, uh, is clear and present and, I think, dangerous. Um, the solution, clearly, um, f for, for control is to install it in the individual 
not to impose it from on high, mm. right? That's, it's too late in the game, actually, to go around kind of uh, intimidating people with, as you say, Robin, cancel culture. Uh, we're talking about um, people who have their own moral compass, who are capable of reading, Larry, as you point out, right? Mm. Seeing that moral compass, getting to know that moral compass, using it to, to govern their behavior. All right, the book is The New Honor Code, and you can follow Grant on Twitter and at culturebuy.com. Do I have that right, yeah. Grant? Perfect. All right, Thanks, nice, Grant. nice to talk to you. Take care. My pleasure. Thanks, Larry. Thanks, Robin.